So a couple of days ago, Owen Jones and Margaret Hodge, the Labour MP, went on Sky News to discuss what happened in Israel. I thought what Margaret Hodge did and said was pretty deplorable. Take a look. Yes, of course, and obviously, firstly, it's so important to share the disgust and horror um, at what happened. I was at a rave on Saturday with my friend who's an Israeli citizen, and I was with him as he took a call from his family. His niece escaped that rave. Uh, two of her friends um, were kidnapped and are now being held hostage uh, by, by Hamas. There's no cause on earth which justifies the slaughter of innocent civilians and, you know, the horror and disgust, uh, you know, is raw with so many people and the anguish of what those left behind are going for is 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 indescribable. Um, obviously my concern about what happens next is partly informed by what's happened before. Um, when we talk about how Israel responds, um, already the Israeli government, which is a far-right government, have made clear that they will institute a policy of collective punishment the defence minister said, I've ordered a complete siege in the Gaza Strip. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. Everything is closed. We are fighting human animals and we act accordingly. That, that is the language of war crimes. I think even there, you can see Margaret Hodge's body language, her face. She's clearly angry at what Owen Jones is saying, but... Unless I'm out of whack here, has he said anything wrong? I mean, he's all the first thing he did was condemn Hamas, as we all should, because the crimes they did is just deplorable. And then he's obviously talked about well, what's happened before is the occupation. And he's incredibly worried about the rhetoric coming out of the government, which is essentially genocide. Now, of course, this was a couple of days ago. Now it started happening. But for Owen Jones's point of view, I don't think these policies were enacted, but they were talked about. Um, but Mug Hodge, I mean, we're going to see she has a problem with it. But even there, she seems really angry. But we'll carry on. It is illegal under international law uh, to impose collective punishment on a people. Um, 80 oh, wait, I, can I, 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 I'd, let you, I'd let you speak. So you're you're going to respond. 80% of those who live in Gaza, which is an open-air prison, um, depend on humanitarian aid. But you're 50, not acknowledging Owen. 50 you're not acknowledging 50%, Owen. Okay. Margaret, not, Margaret no, I'd let you, no, I'd no, let you speak you're at using, great length. I tell you what I can't stand, is that you're using the horrors that we've no, experienced in the last right. three days to no. bang the drum about an issue no, that you've been banging no, the drum on forever. No, I'm not. And what I think Margaret, you should really Margaret. think about is how you... That's disgusting in itself. So... I mean, it's quite clear, but I'll break it down. She is saying you're weaponizing what happens to Israeli citizens from Hamas by pushing your pro-Palestinian agenda. I think that is so gross because it's essentially saying, well, Owen Jones doesn't care about these people dying and all he wants to do is make a political point. Well, of course he's trying to make a political point because the point here is that Palestinians have been under occupation for 75 years. They have been systematically murdered. They've been beaten up. They've been driven out of their homes because of the Israeli state. And in response to the crimes of Hamas, all Palestinians are going to face collective punishment. So, of course, that should be called out. But Margaret Hodge seems to think that this shouldn't be spoken about. And if you do, then it's you're weaponizing an earlier crime from Hamas. The Margaret. people of Israel who have now been there for, you know, have nowhere else to go. M Margaret, they have nowhere else to go. Is, is, it, poss is, it, poss is right, it possible for me to respond? Right, right now, well, not Palestinians, Palestinians they've got nowhere else to go, but okay. Life is as sacred as a child in Israel are being slaughtered. They are dying, okay? Now, 50% of the... Well, can just, please just, let me finish. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll, I'll let you come in. 50% of the population of the Gaza Strip are children. When when Owen Jones said, "All life is sacred, including Palestinian children," there's you could you could hear the gasp. <gasps> How disgusting! What am, are we living in an upside down world? Like, why is this controversial? Why? It's it's actually insane. And those children are being bombed by a government which has said that we are fighting human animals and we act accordingly. Benjamin Netanyahu demanded the civilians of Gaza Strip leave. You cannot leave the Gaza Strip. It is under blockade by air, sea, and land. Now, 96%, okay. please let me finish. Yeah, I will, but... 96%, because we... Margaret spoke at length, 96% of those who have died in the last 15 years are Palestinians. And we cannot talk about what's happened because, you know, when I spoke to my Israeli friend... Who... So this video I'm watching, which is on Twitter, is 8 minutes, 48 seconds long. I think Margaret Hodge spoke for about three and a half minutes, and... 
Owen Jones, because we're on 5 minutes 51 seconds, has spoken for just over 2 minutes or just over 2 and a half minutes. He's already been interrupted multiple times by Mark Hodge and the presenter. So there's, this isn't balanced because we had Margaret Hodge uninterrupted, which is fair enough. Owen Jones was polite enough to do that because we disagree with anything she said. Um, but Owen Jones hasn't even had a minute to speak without being interrupted. And I think that's being helped by the presenter. He took that call. For him, what he wants is this to never happen again. And that context for him was so important because unless there is a lasting peace, which does mean ending the occupation, okay. And a policy Look at of her. apartheid. Okay. And she's ending she's the holding her face of Palestinian out of anger. Then this will okay. never end. You Margaret. think that Jones just All took I'm a shit on the desk? Is completely and utterly ignoring what has happened over the last few days. What? <laughs> Ignore? Wait, wait. The first thing Owen Jones said was to condemn Hamas and the killings by them. That is the first thing he said. He spent a whole like thirty seconds on it, and then he talked about Palestine. The idea, like, Margaret Hodge is literally lying on TV about Owen Jones, who sat next to him, something he said 30 seconds ago. Like, do you think, does she think we have memories of goldfish that we can't remember what he just said? If, and by the way, if anyone's ignoring anything, Margaret Hodge is ignoring Palestinian lives. Owen, just wait, all, just wait. All you've talked about, Owen, is the, your obsession, the obsession with so many people um, around... Uh... Oh, you're so obsessed with the Palestinian people. Why can't we just condemn Hamas? Why can't we just condemn innocent Israeli lives without talking about these bloody Palestinians? I mean, not going to lie, after 75 years of occupation, after systematic killings, oppression... Uh, and all the rest of it, and the, and, uh, the lack of dignity Palestinians get, I would be obsessed too, in a way. Uh, you, uh, uh, the, pal the issue around Palestine, it's been an obsession forever. And you should just think, just think at the moment, if you were an Israeli sitting there, if you'd had family, I mean, here I am, I'm sitting here, and the people I visited, probably, I don't know how many of them are still alive. Are you saying they have no right to defend themselves? Are you saying they have no right to be... All you have argued is how... A, I've, I've never supported the Netanyahu government. No. I've always been critical of that. I'm, but at this moment in time, at this moment in time... At this moment in time... By the way, no one is saying that Israel can't defend themselves, but there's a difference between defending yourself and then committing genocide. If someone were to come up to you in the street and punch you, you hit them back, fine. That, that seems fair, doesn't it? But if someone were to, like, take a swing at you and then you went, right, I'm going to kill your whole family now, not very proportional, was it? This is the M most Margaret, horrific. Margaret. This is the most horrific occasion Margaret. of of of, uh, and you should Margaret. you condemn it. Do you even I, condemn I, I it? Just... He's condemned it multiple times. Do you know what? He, he should respond to Margaret Hodge and say, "Do you condemn genocide? Do you condemn the uh, the occupation of Palestinians?" She'll she'll refuse to do it. I mean, I don't think he does it in this interview, but he he really should. And I think most people should do that. If you have a conversation with people who are on the pro-Israel side who say, why don't you condemn Hamas? First of all, I think you should condemn Hamas. But turn around and say, condemn genocide. Why don't you condemn carpet bombing Gaza? Why don't you condemn shutting off electricity and water to hospitals where babies are on incubators. Why don't you condemn that? Flip the script. Just opened in the strongest possible terms condemning the atrocities. But you don't think they have the Hamas. right I don't believe a military solution you which don't is, think they have a right to defend their state uh, of the Israel. military solution the military solutions that have been pursued against the Gaza Strip have led to huge bloodshed. You don't bloodshed. think they have the right that to defend themselves. I think a military attack on Gaza will lead to countless dead Israeli soldiers so, and huge numbers so of civilians. They should allow the hostages what is to die. And they I should allow say, the hostages I have to, say, to Margaret, die. Margaret, when you, mean, said, you know, when you said, what, what? when you said, when you said, it's very difficult to have a conversation. We just speak over each other. I don't think it's that really, nice. Because you make me really when, angry. Because you're using this I'm horror. Not, no, Margaret, you're Margaret, I'm, Margaret, I'm, when we're talking, I am. I'm going to come in. I have to talk. I am actually going to come in. Okay. Right. I'm going to come in. Sorry. Thank you, both of you, for speaking. No, no. We have to no, talk Owen. about the Palestinians being Owen. killed now. Owen. That's the point. That's Excuse not me. Obsession. I'm sorry, but Sophie Ridge should be, if she's being balanced here, she should at least say, Margaret. He has condemned Hamas. He's just making the point that maybe Israel shouldn't be retaliating in this way. That's not being biased. That would, that would be unbiased because Owen Jones, live on TV, condemned Hamas with Margaret Hodge sat next to him. Right, He just did it. And you're making the claim, which is a lie, which is he doesn't condemn Hamas. Look, he did it. So Sophie Ridge should be calling that out, but she doesn't because 
let's be honest, most of the mainstream media are incredibly pro-Israel, anti-Palestinian, and I guess Sophie Ridge is just the same. Obsession it's my program, program, I get that. I, I but to say it's an obsession with Palestine okay. when we're talking about Palestinian civilians it's, it's, who are being killed Thank right you now. very much and for equal to those coming on the programme and having the debate. It's Look, it is an... I utterly accept that with babies, children dying... But only it's, when it's Israelis, not Palestinians. Both. And they both yes. matter the same. With they babies and children... And to say that controversial is... I outrageous. think it's pretty clear that with... Babies and children dying, emotions are running extremely high, and I actually think that this just demonstrates this, well, the emotion that people are feeling, the anger that people are feeling now. I thought that was a disgusting interview, and I think that Margaret Hodge, I, I, this is me personally speaking now, I think she is a horrible, vile person. Why do I think this? I'm going to give you a lot of evidence as to why, but notice in that interview, all right, Margaret Hodge, was interrupted. You can watch the whole thing, about 10 minutes long. Margaret Hodge was uninterrupted. Owen Jones listened to her. And then Owen Jones uh, spoke. For the first 30 seconds, he's, he condemned the violence of Hamas against Israeli citizens. As soon as he mentioned Palestine and Palestinian children, she butt in. Why? Because she doesn't give a shit about Palestinian people. In fact, I would go as, as far to say, I think she hates Muslims, I think she hates Arabs, and I think she hates Palestinians. Strong words, but that is the only conclusion I can make from people who would rather side with genocide than to stand up for Palestinians. Now, I happen to think that Margaret Hodge is a far-right MP, and you might be thinking, Can't, tone it down, Curtis, a far-right MP, she's a Labour MP. I mean, like, there's, there's the idea that if you're in the Labour Party, you must have some sort of progressive credentials. I don't buy that anymore. If you are someone who backs Israel to commit genocide, give carte blanche to them, how can you be anything other than far right? But let's look at Margaret Hodge a bit more closer. So back in 2007, the BNP backed Margaret Hodge as housing plans. The British National Party has supported Margaret Hodge in calling for British-born families to take priority over immigrants in the queue for council homes. They have seized on the Labour MP's comments as a vindication of its extremist policies. Labour MP Margaret Hodge deserves a word of compliment from the BNP for her efforts to raise the thorny issue of social housing for native Britons, an issue that has been in our manifesto for years, the far-right party said on its website. Britain is full and there's no more room for any economic migrants, whatever language they speak, whatever religion they practice, and whatever they look like. Endorsement from the far-right BNP party I don't think has a leg to stand on when talking about racism. This is the same Margaret Hodge who called Jeremy Corbyn an effing anti-Semite, despite being no evidence that he is. Um, and I think she's just a deplorable person. She also conflates being pro-Palestinian with anti-Semitism. Right-wing Labour MP Margaret Hodge directly linked support for Palestine to accusations of anti-Semitism in an interview last week, well, this is back in 2018, is a very fine line between being pro-Palestinian and the Palestinian cause and being anti-Semitic, said Hodge. And I think he's on the wrong side of that line when she's talking about Jeremy Corbyn. If you think that being pro-Palestinian automatically makes you anti-Semitic, there is something wrong with you. And a more recent video from Margaret Hodge where she says it's understandable to be fearful when communities start to look different. If you suddenly find your neighbours have changed and you suddenly find that the food in the shops is different and you suddenly find that the faces in the schools are different, that creates fear. It does create, we all have a fear of change. And it's all too easy for the middle classes who don't undergo this sort of change in their environment to be critical of it. And I think very, very strongly, I think if I lived in Barking, I don't live in Barking, I work in Barking, Dagnum. If I'd lived there, I'd have felt that same fear of change. I think we need to be more aggressive at calling these sorts of people out. I think if you find it controversial that you want to talk about innocent lives on both sides, I think you have a problem. If you are someone like Margaret Hodge, she goes on TV and says, if you're talking about Palestinians, then you're obsessed with this political point and it's just point scoring or weaponizing it, then you have a serious problem with brown people, ultimately. I'm not someone to try and smear people. I don't, like, I don't feel good about it. And I think what we're seeing more and more from this um, Israel-Palestine conflict is that there's a lot of people out there who I don't always share their politics, but I'm happy to work with them. I'm not a purist. Who are coming up with the most horrendous takes on this, who are 
conflating all Palestinian people with Hamas. We're looking at protests in London, Manchester, Leeds, who are standing with Palestinian people, many Jewish people who are there, and saying these people are terrorists. I just think that we have in this country a hatred for Muslims, Arabs, and brown people, and, and, Palestine. and I think Margaret Hodge just believes that.